Howdy, everybody. Um, before I start the video on me and my husband um, replacing the spindle assembly in my new Laguna, I wanted to take this time to thank all of you so very much for your subscriptions, y your likes, your comments. They are so very helpful. Um, some things that I didn't even think of or try and um, there probably hasn't been a suggestion that I haven't tried if it was possible within my my understanding means and ability um, thank you for tolerating my ignorance on a lot of this stuff um, some things that you guys have, have known for quite some time and just very helpful giving me that information and being patient and your grace is just so appreciated and I wanted to just let you know thank you thank you um, some of your comments I'm able to have uh, some time to respond to and some of them I just don't because there's a whole lot to say or type and um, but I, it's not that I haven't read them I read all of them um, this past couple of days my channel has um, grown uh, my subscriptions have grown and and so I have a lot more uh, comments and and things to respond to so I really appreciate your patience uh, with the responses and I'm just going to be honest with you and let you know what I do and don't know and just this is where I'm at and this is who I am so I hope that um, you guys can gain some knowledge there might be some things that even with it my lack of knowledge my ignorance you might find something helpful or useful so I want to to do that take time to thank you before I started the video for dun, 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 another spindle replacement I am kind of a pro at this point I think after uh, what this is my third I, I replaced it a spindle on the on a big mark that I have over here and Grizzly and now a Laguna so Right. At this point, I should be a specialist, <laughs> right? No, and no. I'm sorry. It's, I don't want to insult anybody who is a specialist. Um, I'm not by any means. I injured my shoulder a few um, days ago, my left shoulder, and I haven't been able to turn. I've been trying to keep it, um, keep it e go easy on it. If if what I'm doing in the house is going easy, not really, but um, turning is is kind of out for a few days until that heals so I have some special stuff planned not really special just the other side the other uh, cut from that crotch piece that I did the spalted oak um, I have the other side I found it out there in my wood pile and I was like woohoo uh, it had a, it had some cracks in it not as much so I went ahead and did the same method with the paper towels and the glue and it's sitting next to my lathe right now all wrapped up and then the other um, the cutoff from the other spalted oak that I did, the lighter one that has the more um, like blonde color in it with the spalting in it. I have that other half too that I'll probably turn into you know, a, a shallow bowl or, or something, but I'm excited for those pieces because I know that there's something gorgeous in there. I've already turned their other halves, right? To become one and <laughs> anyways um, thank you so much. Again I'm blessed and humbled by all of your comments and everything that you guys um, are saying and, and suggestions you're giving is really helping me to move forwards and, and I don't even think that greatly and highly of the stuff I turn. Now the wood, on the other hand, has something else to say, but um, as far as my skill and my abilities, I, I don't even think that highly of them. But uh, I really appreciate y'all. What a great community it is to be a part of and what a great um, outlet that we're blessed to have to share it with one another without having to drive across the country. We are in a time where we are truly blessed to have information at our fingertips. And because of all of you other turners and woodworkers um, is the reason why I have the information and knowledge I do. So thank you it's it's priceless it's it's obviously the cost of the internet connection but um, it's worth it and I see now by doing it the time that it takes to just move your camera I mean so I appreciate you I really do all of you 
who take that time to not only move your camera around while you're trying to work, but also edit your videos. And that is a process in itself. And then uploading, waiting for them to upload or save or whatever is, is a process in itself. And that costs money and um, extra expense on top of, you know, your, your wood turning. So I get it. I understand. And I am so thankful, so, so thankful that you do that. So everyone have a good night. Enjoy watching me and my husband uh, put this bug landed on me. Uh, <laughs> put this um, spindle assembly in and I hope that I explain it well at the end of the video. I kind of go through the process again because while I'm doing it, it's a little hard to get my camera up in here and you can't see, I can't see nothing so you ain't seeing nothing. <laughs> Anyways, um, hope you enjoy. Hope you, hopefully that if, <coughs> excuse me, if y'all have a uh, spindle replacement to do that this may be a bit of video that you can um, reference to if not well I'm sorry for being such a cruddy instructor slash camera holder anyways y'all have a good night Everybody. and God bless Here. I contacted Laguna about my um, spindle with the um, wobbling issues I've been having um, I've put several uh, different brands of chucks on it and still oh, getting some issues. wobble um, not presuming or assuming that there was a spindle issue just narrowing down all of my issues and uh, letting them know I sent them a video of um, the indicator on the spindle um, the gentleman said that the spindle does look to be off obviously one one thousandths um, I, I don't know what is the allowance until it starts to be noticeable in your turning. I'm not a machinist. I just know what's happening. So, um, customer anyway, service yeah. said that they would review my video. They reviewed the video of all the things that I had tested. Same thing I had shown y'all in my um, videos. And they're, they said they were going to send me a new spindle. That was a few days ago, and I arrived in the mail today. I did send a picture of how the box arrived to Laguna and they said that it's not a problem. That and we have a, <coughs> um, we have a hole in our box and my spindle is clearly sticking out of my hole. Now, I have not opened it at all. I, I took pictures of it as it was and since Why? it was again, I don't want to touch it until this is a spindle. It's a pretty important part. Uh, on your lathe, why, and I hate to sound so whatever about it, but with all my experience, I get a little paranoid, maybe? Call me crazy, I don't know. Why do you not have this part wrapped up and protected? <laughs> that! <laughs> Sorry, I just... I guess this is part of my excitement of having to replace the spindle. I don't know if they're I am now a lathe mechanic. I think after like four or five times you tearing something apart, you, you're pretty much a specialist, right? Like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, they sent me a, a new spur center and a life oh. center in my video. They sent me a new one. I thank them so much for that because, you know, this is a brand new machine and um, it was out of the box that way. And the same with my life center. I would, if you look through my past video of me whining and complaining. Uh, this wobbles. So they sent me a new one, and I'm fixing to look at it. <laughs> Just stay positive, stay positive. <laughs> Styrofoam and stuff in here, but there's a hole in the wood, so of course it's gonna go through. Come on now. What is that? So, we're gonna test this out too. Make sure it is not squabbly wobbly. Get my laser. Look at my, look at my It's so muggy out here that Everything is, anyway, who cares? I do, clearly. I should have my um, shop hair, don't care. But I do have Bob Ross, and he has curly hair. Right? Okay. Oh, there it is. I'm, it's not a, it's not a spur drive. Maybe it's something I need to install the spindle? Um, it has what is that I'm trying to figure
figure things out before I go and ask questions. So I don't want to ask a dumb question. So what is that? It won't fit in there, and that's what I thought. Spur center? Question mark. Spur center? Question mark. Anyways, I guess I better quit playing. I'm avoiding having to put this in as what it is. Listen to me, got me whining already. So, if nothing else, it'll help someone else be informed. Oh, this is gonna be greasy. So let me figure out what I need to do and I will be right back. My directions. Disconnect the machine from the power source. 10-4. Loosen the locking handle and lift up on the tension handle to remove tension from the poly B belt. Um, I didn't say to remove it, but I'm sure going to have to because I'm replacing the spindle. Alright. Open door and remove the belt from the lower pulley. Did that. Loosen to set screws in the hand wheel. Alright. Loosen the set screw. Loosen. Doesn't say to remove, so I'm just going to loosen I know y'all can't see it that much. Okay. Loosen socket head cap screw enough to unthread the clamping nut. Okay. Just right. Alright. There's no room to turn my hand off. Now I gotta stop. So loosen it just enough to to unthread the clamping nuts. So far, not so bad. Ooh, ooh, praise the Lord. I need my tray. <laughs> Alright, good set screws and the right hand pulley. Loosen, so I'm just bringing them out till they are flush with the pulley exterior. I guess if that's the proper way to say it. Sorry if you're having a hard time hearing me because my fan is too hot to not have one. I think it's almost 8 o'clock and it still feels like sauna ing out here. Loosen set screws in the collar. J. It's pointing to as if the shaft is exposed once you do that. And it is. but not enough. Okay, Use a wood or dowel or aluminum to not spindle towards the tailstock. I don't want to knock on anything yet because I'm still trying to find the set screw that they're talking about that doesn't exist in my world. Can't get to that. The instructions do not say to do this, but I don't see any other way you, you can't out. get the spindle out unless you take these out. Okay. What the um, RPM sensor reads. Oh, so you gotta loosen all this jumps up, jump I'm out. sure. Yeah, I'm see how I have to, well yeah, because the spindle goes in and then the shaft goes through. <clears throat> the pulley goes in and the spindle goes through it. Is that what I said? Sure. Something like that. 
Whatever you say, lady. Here. You got four of them? Yeah. Do you want to catch everything inside and not pull on it? Um, no. Yes. Alright, hold on. I'm trying to get everything pushed back. Alright, what is keeping it from coming out? Yeah! I guess this is where you have to gently tap it. Oh no, the key weighs in the way. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna hang in there. Okay. This pulling may be, or this thing will hit you better than that one. Sorry. This one may be, oh. That goes in that way. Alright, so now I'm going to take all of the fendangles off of this, you have to remove these, you have to move this, you have to move everything, the keyway, um, to reassemble it. Yay. I don't understand why they have it. If it has to be disassembled, why do they have it all assembled for you when you get it? Why do you do that over there so you're not holding the thing down? Well, because this is where the camera's at. Yeah, it can be moved. But it's a I wonder point. if that's thicker than this. I don't know. Did you? My other one, my digital one's in that, back, in that thing up there. 34.7. Can you see that real quick? Just two seconds. Down there right there where your hand is. Just. Thirty-four point nine. So it is thicker? It reads thicker, unless I'm just screwing up. I mean, this is a digital device from Harbor Freight, so... It's not a digital device. Oh, it is digital. <laughs> Never mind, ignore me. So that set screw has to go on the keyway. The key, I should say. Not the keyway. The keyway is the hole. Whatever. Anyways. I'm not a mechanic. I just want to turn wood. Oh, that's right. Got to remove these. <laughs> Sorry, I keep walking in front of the camera, but... Ugh. I tore my, um shoulder up carrying a bag of chicken feed. Um, it really wasn't carrying it that messed me up. It was it was walking through the parking lot because they didn't have uh, the tractor supply. They didn't have the carts that I needed uh, to cart it out. Instead, my stubborn butt said, I don't need no cart. Well, it started to slip from my hands, and I bent down, obviously, to catch it, and it jolted something in my shoulder. So for the past uh, five days, I have been in some pain. Ugh, some pain. And... Um, I didn't turn at all this weekend, which is abnormal for me. I haven't turned all week. I haven't been able to, I don't have the full range of motion, I guess you could say, to do that. All right, so. I'm going to stick that on there. Make sure I got everything oriented the proper direction. And I'm aware that my, I'm going to try to have where my back isn't to the camera the whole time. We'll see. There's quite a bit you have to put on here um, before before uh, being able to stick it through the backside. Sorry, I know you guys can't see. I can barely see, so join me in not being able to see. All right, put my key back in there. Now I just gotta line up that key with this Duma Hickey, the whatchamacallit, 
what does my dad call it? The uh, Waylaid Cash Meddler? <laughs> yeah, the Waylaid Cash Meddler. I mean, honestly, this isn't too terribly uh, hard. It's definitely a lot easier than the Grizzly Lake. Oh, so that's your walking, huh? Way out. Learn something new every day. I'm just gonna make sure it's lined up with the locking, because that fits right in two grooves that are in there. So that's purpose behind that, so I wanna make sure I line it up for that purpose. and markers. So I'm using the belt to align the position of the pulley. It seems straight to me. Absolutely acceptable. Tighten that pulley. Alright, All right, so when I pulled the spindle my bearings my rear bearing came out pretty easily which is kind of scary oh shoot oh this is for the okay that's for the outside I feel like I'm losing my mind which is kind of scary and the shape of this um, what do they call these they're like O-rings, but they're metal. It looks gasket. like get yeah gasket. Whatever. It looks. Get an angle on there. It looks like a potato chip. It ain't flat. So I don't know what's going on there. Oh, I probably need to undo the belt. I'll probably make it easier. Yeah, I just did Hey, there we go. Oh, yeah. Sorry, folks. Don't do that. Don't leave the belt on. Make sure that's... So, what really holds it all on is this. And those are sealed on bearings, obviously. Yep.
there is no tool to they give you to tighten this and this keeps the spindle Come on, look. Yeah. You come up here and push this dumb button. Why can't you all come up with some kind of like lock you ain't got to hold on to, Laguna? Just saying. Pliers down. Medic! You're dark. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. It does. Yes, I said my husband was right. <laughs> sure, that'll get edited out. <laughs> no. It should. I didn't sign a waiver. Oh, whatever. Look, it's, I'm able to move it. Hold on, let me tighten it. All right, unlock real quick. Make sure I didn't tighten it too much. Tighten it enough. Well, loosen that back up. No, I can still turn it. Like, it's not tight. It's, like, really loose. It just didn't seem like it was sunk in this far when I took it off. Did you have this gap up here before? Uh... I don't know, look at the other spindle and see if it has that. It doesn't go any further. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the gap in the front is because of that lip. Yeah. And we'll bring, I'll bring the camera around and, and show you everything that I had to take off and yada, yada, yada. Sorry. Get the job done, driven, and not hold the camera and do it at the same time. All right. It, this rim right here is hitting the motor. Oh. Ha! Ah. Idiot! Just yes. trying to get things done too quickly. Yes. Did you scratch up the surface of the motor? Nah. She's good, she's good, she's good. Just gun oil, it's nothing crazy. Well, they had like better pictures. No. If they had better products, you wouldn't be doing this either. Uh, true. True story. Hashtag true story. Sorry, putting the belt on. as far down as it goes. I'm going to tighten those little screws down because... Show you, let me get my hand out of the light. I'm going to show you um, what you couldn't see while I was in there because I could barely see. So I'm going to show you what it is that I had to loosen that the instructions do not tell you. It is not the same. 
Now, anyone who's mechanical can figure it all out, and that's good to go, but I think where the fear of it lies is, is this supposed to come off? You can guess all you want to, but there's still a possibility of messing it up. I want to make some notes here before I go through this. Um, sorry, the camera's so wobbly. I'm holding it with my hand. My left shoulder's messed up, so I can't stabilize it with my left hand. Um, my husband and I noticed the bearings, um, they're not really, really tight on the spindle. So they, they literally slide on and off. Now with the big mark behind me and the Grizzly, you guys obviously see me change out the spindle on that. There was pounding to get on and off the new one, uh, because it's, those bearings are really seated tightly. Now, they may have done that for the ease of changing these things out. I don't know. I don't understand why that would, why you would need to change them out, especially like being a month old. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but there was play, felt like there was play up and down until you tighten that very back, um, what do they call it? Locking nut whatever. If there's play and the only thing that really keeps everything in place is that locking nut, it, it, there's still a possibility of the spindle doing this um, inside on those bearings. So I, I don't know. I don't build these things for a living. I just know that I've had enough of taking them apart and putting them back together. I'm done after this. I I am throwing in the white flag. I'm not doing this again. It not doing this again. So, anyways, let's get on with it so I can show you um, in there what all I had to uh, loosen up and and so because the instructions, if this is the instructions they give everybody when they have them replace the spindles on their lathes, um, they're not clear. Uh, at least enough for someone that doesn't take part lathes for a living and has never done this before. So, bear with me. I'm going to do my best in narrating this whole situation. First and foremost, you have to take... Sorry. First and foremost, you have to release the tension of your belt. Then you come over here and unscrew these two set screws. Pull your handle off. Inside you will see a part, uh, they didn't send an extra one, they had only one. It has a Allen screw here and it unscrews off your shaft. So go ahead and remove that and the Allen screw and unscrew that. That's what squeezes your spindle and your, um, you know, your head and tail stuck together to keep that in there. There's nothing inside that prevents the head spindle from moving in and out. <laughs> um, other than that part there. It's underneath the handle, sorry. The handle doesn't prevent it from moving. It's the, uh, I can't remember what they called it. Anyways, I'm just gonna call it a doohickey. So then you undo your belt, pull your belt off. It, um, just hang it there then undo these two set screws for your pulley. You have two keyways, one for your pulley. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it because the pulley is literally right on top of it. There's a keyway here that helps line up the spindle and the pulley together. Then you have one, let me get the light in there. You have one down there. This is where it kind of gets a little tricky because there's not much space. And if you have big hands, getting in there is not fun. So here is your keyway for, excuse my focus, for this doohickey. And this doohickey is to lock your spindle, which is a horrible design. I don't have it lined up so it's not locking. Because you have to push and hold that down in order to, um, 
in order to, you know, keep it locked. With uh, the Grizzly, it had a key that you put in the headstock part, and, you know, it for the m most part, it stayed in there. Um, for the Vic Mark, it has a separate little doohickey that stays in there until you actually pull it out. So it's a good design for, um, but if you, obviously, if you forget to pull your, your, on the Vic Mark, if you forget to pull that out, then you just, you know, smell burnt rubber because your pulley is, um, <laughs> burning your rubber. Anyways. <laughs> So back to the order of operations. You unscrew your pulley, uh, set screws off there. Then you come into here and you, uh, it's, it's, you unscrew that set screw off of your key. Um, slide that down. Then you have these here, which this little thing here is your RPM reader. There's the screws, so it reads off that. Obviously, that's what that for. I mean, it's kind of obvious, I guess. I could be ignorant to what that is, but anyways, that's what I assume. You have to take those out. Um, the new pulley came with them already installed. Um, it, the new pulley came with everything except for the... Uh, doohickey, I'm going to call it doohickey, back here that <coughs> squeezes all this together. It came with everything but that and but a new handle. So you get all of these screws, new keys, new pulleys, all of the set screws are already there. And I didn't get a new belt, but this one's just fine, so they didn't, that, they didn't send that. Um, you get a new one of these and in, in both, like I said, the new keys. So you pull this off, make sure you uh, pull your key out all four of these make sure these set screws are loosened there's two of them um, and then you just pull from your headstock side you pull out um, and you may have to you just got to uh, because the spindle is not the same size all the way across it's smaller here then it gets bigger again and then I think think down there it might get smaller again I'm not sure I um, don't remember and I can't see it from this angle so you just have to um, lift up and you know thing I'm jiggy it around a little bit to get it completely out then once you have that all out of course make sure you have your hand in here to catch your pulley so it doesn't go slamming down on your bottom pulley because that's the last thing you want to do is damage more goodies and then, once you get all that off, um, the back, just to warn you, the back bearing, as you're trying to get that out, um, may or may not fall out. And there is a separate little gasket-y um, uh, thing. I should know what those things are called. My father's a mechanic, for Pete's sakes, and I used to deliver parts. Uh, <laughs> doesn't say much for me now. Um, that back bearing may come out so just be be mindful of that and and watch out for it you don't want that to uh, get damaged because that gets damaged and that seal gets broken then you're having to wait for a new bearing and that's no fun um, I'm not speaking from experience or anything um, so you get all that taken apart then when you stick your new spindle in make sure that you stick it in through obviously the headstock side first you're going to get your this ready put that on as your shaft is, is coming through um, make sure you put your belt on because I forgot to do that um, yeah my husband uh, reminded me make sure you put your belt on and then put your pulley on then once you get all of that on start here Put your keyway in, uh, then make sure that this here, this little gap in this uh, locking piece that's designed to help you lock down your spindle, lines up good um, width-wise from the front to the back. 
make sure it lines up good on there because it there's an old notch you know the be your old one will have a notch maybe even the new one will have a notch in it because it does come assembled um, just make sure you try to line that up so that way it's not hanging too far this way or too far towards the head spindle now that does not touch or rest against or come close to the, the headstock uh, bearing you can see in there that it is far away so this has nothing to do with holding the headstock side um, keeping it from moving back and forth sorry my camera um, so just make sure you get that lined up well and then tighten down the set screw that is in there right there once you have that on then you're going to come over here and put back in your um, other thingamajiggies <laughs> and then once you get all those in go ahead and put your belt uh, around your pulley what I did to line it up was I just put my um, belt on my pulley at the top and bottom before tightening your pulley. You want to make sure that obviously it's lined up because if you get it too close, it's going to rub the inside. You get it too far over this way and you're going to have, you know, some wonkiness going on. So I just stuck it on and with it loosened, spin it a few times just to make sure that this pulley, you know, moves to line up the belt. You know, of course you have to pull down and tighten your handle a little bit to do that but make sure you loosen it back up because in the video you'll notice that I had this tightened down when I was trying to um, sorry I had it uh, lifted up because I had pulled you know had that all whatever and I couldn't get my handle on and I didn't notice it until I've trying you know struggling with it a little bit that's why I'm doing this is because these are some things that you just you know unless you've done this as many times you're not thinking of that stuff so after you get your pulley yes pulley oh sorry your keyway for your pulley has to be put on before you slide your pulley over so reverse a little bit be a horrible job at trying to explain this but forgive me this is my first time doing it on this one um, make sure you put your keyway in can't see it from here because it's in there that helps line up your spindle and your pulley together. Then slide your belt on, then slide your pulley through your shaft and then it should come out the other end. Then line your pulley up with your using your belt. Once you got that lined up, go ahead and tight your, tighten your screws, making sure that your headstock, you will have this little gap because it goes a uh, little big back little again and then littler than that so I couldn't remember if I had that gap prior to this and um, my husband showed me on my old spindle that it looks exactly the same so inside here is what rests against the bearing on the headstock side all right <clears throat> making sure that that is tight against there before you start tightening up everything and and Obviously, you'll be able to tell when you start to go put on the handle anyway, but um, tighten those. Once you have those tightened and all of these tightened, make sure this little guy is lining up on them. When um, I didn't notice that they have screws that you can move. Um, they're kind of hard to get to, but they have little screws that you can move this thing back and forth and then screws here that you can move forwards and backwards. So it goes front to back left to right um, it that doesn't help even if you did <laughs> loosen them up all of this stuff here just bangs into it while you're trying to um, get this off so be mindful of that because you may be able to avoid hitting it whatsoever but this is this is not a very big space to you know to to work especially I mean I don't have I don't have that big hands, but I don't have dinky hands, but my husband's hands would definitely uh, fill this <laughs> area up pretty good. <laughs> and, um, anyways, so be mindful of that you can unscrew it or readjust it, so that way making sure that it's lined up. When, by the time I got done, mine was like facing, facing downwards and off to the left, so I had to uh, tighten up the screws, and it's even though I tightened it, it still... <laughs> it's still loose so as long as it's you know reading able to read those you should be fine
I hope so. I still haven't started it up yet, so I may be completely wrong. Um, once you get that all on, then you want to make sure you put this little metal ring that goes on before your bearing. So if your bearing does happen to pop off or pop out, um, it went in pretty simple. I didn't have to bang on the bearing, which was a blessing because that's what caused my issue with the uh, Grizzly. But that begs the question, it's so easy to get on and off, is that a is that a good thing in the long run? I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't build these. I don't, you know, I didn't go in here and measure and, and all that in order to see what kind of gaps or movement or whatever. So once you have that bearing on, you should be able to make sure you lift your spindle up. Oh, sorry, make sure you loosen your belt because my husband was pulling on it, like up on it like tra crazy trying to lift it up so I can line the bearing up with the hole and it was because we had the uh, belt at least the weight of the motor on the belt anyway and it was obviously uh, giving us a fit and I didn't realize I had you know I lined up my pulleys by using my belt so I had that left tightened when I had done that so make sure you after you line up your pulley and tighten that loosen this because you're going to need to loosen this in order to get your bearing um, on without resistance so it'll slide on we I wasn't being mindful of that when of course they don't have that on the instructions either so if this is your first time you know replacing something like this I mean maybe maybe I'm just more ignorant than some Anyways, slide your bearings on. Then there is a locking um, bolt nut doohickey. I can't remember what they call it. It's a little jig. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, you tighten that down. Now, I had mine loosened up so much that the head of the screw was sticking out. So it would rub the inside here. Um, so just make sure that that's screwed down a little bit because you are going to have to tighten it past the point where that will hit. Uh, it doesn't, there's no like, you can see that there's a certain tool that you use to tighten it, but they didn't send one. So I just used my pliers trying to not mar it up or anything else, but it seemed to screw on just fine. And we tightened it until we had no more back and forth play, but also to where it spins freely you don't want it you can get it so tight that this is like you can't spin it and there won't be any smooth so you just got to find that sweet spot that sweet spot in there um tighten that bolt down uh you might have to lock your spindle or have someone hold the lock for you i should say because that's exactly the reality um then put your handle back on making sure that your belt is loose so that away that this here will not hit your motor. Um, this might be like, some people might watch this and go, duh, but I am sharing my raw, honest truth experience. I had that tightened down and me and my husband were wondering why this thing wasn't going back on. Well, that was why, because my motor was in the way and whatever, make fun of me. I don't care. Uh, so make sure your motor is, is down and out of the way so you can slide this on easy you slide it on I just make sure it's not rubbing you you know you'll be able to tell when you put it on there um, the first lathe I got from Laguna um, back in March I think it was when I received it this was rubbing so when you, it was turning you can hear this shh constantly this scraping because this was touching this and um, it was driving me nuts and it took me a while to figure out where it was actually coming from but um, just make sure that that handle this handle does not hold anything on uh, that I can tell it's all of that that nut that's in there so this can be moved back and forth to whatever makes it to where that doesn't um, rub so moving on then obviously make sure these are lined up I'm trying to think of what else tighten your uh, belt back down so that way you have just a little bit of um, deflection and that is enough I usually just go by the weight of the motor see how that is and then if I have normally I don't have to push it down from there it's 
seated in. Um, it looks, looks to be lined up okay. I'm going to put my new Life Center in. And I don't know what that one piece was, but it doesn't look like a spur drive to me. So there's the over, my, my perspective, my view. And you can see it. That is the new live center they sent me. It might be a little dark, but see either that or it's glaring. All right. I have the dowel indicator in the inside of the spindle. That's where um, the technician from Laguna told me to measure. I'll be darned if that's not. I'm turning the spindle by hand. And it ain't moving, which that's my other spindle did. You can turn it on. on my Nova that it, that it hits here before it hits here. I'm almost sure, the recent Nova that I got. So I'll bring you back after I get that readjusted and we'll meter it together. Forgive me for my lack of knowledge, my ignorance in all of this. I never planned to have to know any of this information in order to turn. Um, use some things you just are forced into learning and and um anyways it's just some things you just end up being forced into learning i guess so i'm gonna put it obviously on the plate here this is all one one piece the spindle this isn't a separate piece or anything let me block out the light so you can see sorry That has a hair movement, not much, but I'm very happy because the inside measurement of my old spindle, and I know it's not exactly the greatest <laughs> close-up either, but I can see it, so you can see it through the camera. I'm looking through the camera. It's just slight. It's not a lot. So if you're chucks, I'm... Um, you know, chucks obviously screw on here. They're either going to touch the face of this or they're going to touch this. They're going to seat on one of these two surfaces. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I mean, other than that, you're just, you're relying on uh, threads to hold your chuck on. Which obviously that's true, but there's, you know, whatever. Um, it's too tired. I'm too tired and hot and muggy to explain these things. It'll always be too hot and muggy even in the winter time to try to explain these things. That's that. My life center still It's alive for sure. <laughs> it wants to do its own thing. So it's alive. I don't know about center. Uh the word center and life centers definitely does not apply to my life center. Uh I hate to make jokes but it, it it is what it is, and, um, you know, I don't know how many of those I'm going to have to have shipped from Laguna in order to get one that's not doing this dance. Um, and the spur drive, what is that? Is that the new, the new spur drive? Uh, I'm sorry. It's just, it's funny. It's, I just want to come out here and get it fixed so I can just get back to the joy of turning. Like Bob Ross says, the joy of painting. Uh, felt like a bug in my boot. Yeah, Doug, I hear you laughing at me now. It's all right. Something was crawling. Felt like it anyway. <clears throat> what don't kill you, or bite you, and poison you makes you stronger, right? <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy future content. I hope you enjoy this content. <laughs> Have a blessed day. Stay cool. It's too hot to not stay cool. I'm shining like a diamond. <laughs> shining like a diamond out here. Anyways.